guys, hope you're well. Uh, first of all, I just want to apologise for the background. Currently at work in my normal job that I do. Um, it's currently 20 past 12 at night, so I thought I may as well try and get a video through to you now because uh, working nights, it's very hard to uh, get content through. Uh, unfortunately, won't be able to get to the preview that Luke's doing for the Huddersfield game due to work, obviously. So I just thought I'd get my thoughts through to you guys now. So apologies for it and uh, sorry for the unprofessional background, but I wanted to give you content. I wanted you to hear my thoughts about West Brom on Tuesday and also my thoughts as to how I feel we can get the three points on Saturday against Huddersfield. First and foremost, just want to address a few comments that came out after the Swansea game on Saturday. If people haven't already seen the video um, that I did with uh, James and Luke um, after Daniel Stendhal left, um, I actually did say that I didn't know whether I was actually going to go to the game. Um, on the Monday before Stendhal left the club, there were them rumours that came out that Stendhal already left, which then I did the rant, which was a 20 minute rant that I did, which was very emotionally and passionately involved in the video and said I weren't going to go to the games, I weren't going to go to the, the games again under this regime. And then obviously I have thought about things and change my mind on the basis that I want to support the players. The players have nothing to do with these issues. I want to support the fellow supporters that are going to the club. These are not the reasons why the club's in the mess that it is. I don't support the board, and not for one minute does anybody think that me going to the games home and away means that I have the backing, that I back the board. I don't. I, I was one of the first people, even under the Marais era, when, the, when they appointed him, that were scrutinising the reason why they came to the club and all this time I've still scrutinised every decision that they've made. I still feel that they're here for the wrong reasons, not the right reasons. So people that are saying I'm a turncoat, well, more or less assuming that I am. Uh, you know, I am passionate about Barnsley Football Club. I've supported them since 1993. Sporting for 25 years home and away. Been a season ticket holder for all of that time. And um, going with my family and then going on my own and then going with my old man across the country to watch Barnsley. The, the football club means more to me than I can even explain. So for people to try and assume that I'm not going to go to the that I'm going to the game just to kind of like create some kind of uh, drama or something like that is totally off the mark. It's a load of bullshit. Um, I went to the game purely because I want to support the players. I want to support the staff that's been put in this in this situation. And on reflection, I felt like that I needed to go to support the support the lads. So that was the reason I stated it on the video. What's happening in Oakwell? Uh, happening happened at Oakwell. If you're subscribed to the channel, have a look through the videos, and it'll come up there. And I said it on there as well. That was the few days after Stendhal had gone during the international break, and I said I was I don't know whether I wanted to go or not. But I thought on reflection, I want to go. I paid four hundred quid for a season ticket this year. I'm not letting them have the last say by me staying away. I want to show to them that you can do what you want, but you'll not take my football club away from me. More importantly, going back to West Brom, first of all, I want to thank the players for the performance that they gave. Going to top of the league, we were bottom of the league, nobody gave us a chance whatsoever. Everybody felt that we were going to be turning up, losing 3 or 4-0. Last away performance at Preston at Deepdale a few weeks back, we got Funk 5-1. Now I'm thinking a similar scoreline were on the cards, but I will go into West Brom with a lot more optimism due to the performance that we had against Swansea, the top six team. They're a good football inside and we match them like for like for 90 minutes. So Brent, West Brom, Brent, I'm going to say Brentford then, West Brom, first of all, very experienced side, premiership side really if you look at it, the players that they've got at their disposal, the loan signings that they can get into the club as well, the, the coach that they've had, Slavin Bilic, former Croatian international manager, West Ham, Bek Shitas, is coached all over Europe, very established international good coach that is really a Premier League coach their remit this year is getting up automatically and they sit top of the table still clear by two points so for us going there they've got a good win at the weekend against Middlesbrough they know how to win dirty they know how to win playing good football but I felt that we had a bit of a chance and hoping thinking that well if they can underestimate us and if we can get an early goal and get stuck into them and make it physical and take us chances we weren't, we weren't going to get many but be clinical if we can then we've got a chance and that's what we did. We started the game really well. We got stuck into them. Didn't let them have time to dwell on the ball. As I always say, that we did the basics well. We switched it from attack, defence to attack really nicely. And we all worked together as a team unit. When we were pressing, we were going together in twos and threes, not ones. Um, the work rate, 
the energy that we had. It was just fantastic. 1-0, great move from Dougal. Fantastic tackle in the middle of the park. We've missed him. You know, there's been rumours going round that he's been fit for a month and, God, what we would what we, what we would have done if, you know, the likes of Dougal and Diaby had been fit for a few more games. We might not be in this situation, but we are, we are where we are, so we can't be hypothetical. But Dougal, another great game from him yesterday. Been fantastic since he's come back. We've really missed him. His composure in the middle of the park, his... Um, Time that he seems to have loads of time on the ball. He's physical. He gets stuck in. He does the dirty work. He lets Moat and McGee be more expressive. He gives them license to be more creative, further up the field, and he gives protection from to the back four. And you can see that the defence are more assured with somebody there. Uh, and Dougal sets up that first goal with that tackle. Great tackle. Cavare doing what I love him to do, taking players on, gambling. And when he's got license to express himself, he's one of the best fullbacks in the league, in my opinion. There's a lot of fans that slate Cavare, and me on his day, he does frustrate me. I admit that he's a very frustrating player to watch. But when he's on his game, he's on. He's one of the best fullbacks in the league for me. For me, he's got to be doing it more consistently, though. We see him do it at Wigan. We saw him have a good game against Swansea. He had a good game yesterday. But then we've also seen his poor performances: Brentford, uh, Luton. Some, well, I don't know if he played against Luton, but we've, I've definitely seen some games this season where Cavari hasn't turned up, and he has turned up. And somebody argued to me yesterday during half time if Cavari did that week in week out, he wouldn't be here due to the assets that he's got as a player, his attributes, his pace, his power, his strength, and he really kept their full, their winger quiet in that first half. And I thought I felt he had a really good game, one, one of the best games that he's had at the football club, if I'm being honest. He sets up that first goal, a great header by Woodrow, saying how far out he is. He's had somebody jump up with the header for him, first of all. He's got Sam Johnston to beat, who's a very good keeper at this level. And he's still got to generate that power and that accuracy. And I, I couldn't believe it when it went in. But I'm thinking, right, 1-0. We need another now because we knew that West Brom were going to come back into it. I'm thinking maybe that goal's been a bit of a bad thing for us because it's woke them up, really. And they did nearly get an equaliser about two minutes later. They had a good chance and the ball went across the box and we got away with it. But we got a second Mowat cutting inside. I thought it was McGeehan that scored first of all. And, but then it was Woodrow, obviously, came up that Woodrow scored a great left-footed shot. And again, I'm thinking 2-0. And I'm thinking, right, we need to hold on to half-time, we need to switch on. And one big thing that, I, that I'm key on is game management. And we did that well in that first half. Um, West Brom, we, I thought if they, if they could get an early goal just before half-time, to take into half-time, to make it 2-1, the momentum of the game would change totally. But thankfully... They didn't do that. We went into full. We went into half time with a two goal lead. I'm thinking, right, we can regroup, go again. First 15, 20 minutes of the second half, and it's our it's our game to win. And so we did that. First 15 minutes of the second half, I thought again we did well. We kept on playing football. We created a great chance. Woodrow's hit the crossbar. I think it is at the top of the crossbar. It's come out tomorrow to the edge of the box. He's hit it with his favourite foot, his left foot. I'm thinking it's going in three 0 Game over. Misses. And then I'm thinking, well, that's changed. That was the change in that was the change for me in the game. We missed our we missed our at 0 That was the proper chance that we had in that in that second half. To me, West Brom were the better side overall in that second half. I must admit, they were a better team. They made two subs at half time. You could tell straight away the village had given them a bollocking at half time. They brought two. They changed the structure. They brought um, Slovenian international on. I'm not going to pronounce his name. Kradjinovic, I think it is. And they've brought um, Connor Townsend on, a midfielder and a, and, a, and a wing fullback, and it seemed to work in their favour. They had a bit more legs going into that second half. I don't know if we gassed out at half time. We seemed to use all his energy into that first half. Seemed a bit similar to Leeds in a way. We seemed to compete with them for 70, 80 minutes, and then they took over with the fitness a little bit. We seem we've, we seem fucked at the end, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, so then 2 0. And then it starts to go downhill. I'm not. I'm saying we, we play. We play fantastic. But this is the only ultra critiques that I have. We gave them. We gave them both goals, in my opinion. First goal, Diaby. It didn't come from that corner originally. It came from Diaby giving a free kick away about 40 yards out. He's trying to run out with the ball from the back, and nearly got caught doing that in the first half. He should have just punted it long. There were Brown across the other side in, in free in space, but he's tried to take a player on. He's lost the ball. He's, he's um, gave away a free kick. Fair play. It's not in a bad area. But we haven't got rid of the ball. West Brom's kept possession. They've got a corner. And I haven't seen the goal. I haven't been, I've only been able to watch our um, Barnes's highlight goals. I haven't actually seen West Brom's goals. But from watching it live, I don't know what he's tried to do, whether he's tried to edit into the floor. 
but it's one of those things you know he didn't obviously didn't mean to do it and Collins hadn't got a chance it went in that quick and bounced up over him under the bar and I'm thinking hey up momentum's totally changed here um, and then we made another bad decision this is the only thing I question with Murray is the decision of the substitutes he brought Dougal off and I don't know whether that were a medical decision that the club doctor said well he can only play 65 or 70 or a tactical change but when Dougal came off I felt that their player Pereira who got the second goal for West Brom had a lot more freedom in that midfield to create and really expose Mowat to McGeehan because McGeehan and Mowat seem to be giving free kicks away constantly. I know they both got booked. And for me, we were overrun at times in that midfield in the last 15 minutes when Dougal came off. We brought a Malik Wilkes. And I am a fan of Wilkes on his day, but that was the most frustrating performance I've seen from Wilkes since he's come to the football club. You know, when he first came in, I was really positive, thinking, well, he absolutely did us all over when he were on loan at Donny last season thinking if we could get him in on a permanent from Leeds the offer of playing at an higher level still playing in the local area as a young lad then I think then I think we'd do well we're getting Wilkes in and when we got him in I thought it's a great cool that that's a really good cool but apart from Fulham I ain't seen him turn it on Leeds at times Brighton seen him turn it on apart from that I don't know if it's something going on behind the scenes I'm aware he's got a court case next month so I don't know whether that's impacting on his on-the-field performances. I'm thinking, right, well, he's come back from his suspension. He's been out for a game. He's going to come back. He's going to be on the bench. He's going to come on last 20 minutes. And when he came, and I were optimistic, thinking he's going to be helping Woodrow out. Thinking, well, Wilkes coming on is going to make a good impact for us. But he, he didn't do anything when he came on. He looked more tired than the lads that had been on for the 70, 75 minutes previous. And that was really concerning for me, thinking Wilkes was one of our main buys in the summer and he just doesn't seem to be the main player or the same player that he was when he was at Doncaster. Some people have said, is it the step up in standard? Obviously, League One to the Championship is a big step up for some players. But I just don't think the attitude's there. You know, you, you don't have to be a great footballer, but you can still apply hard work and a good work rate look at Chaplin you know look at other lads that have played in League One last year like likes of Brown and you know they make mistakes but they try 110% and they're pulling my hair out you know every time he went up for a ball ball were coming back he had a great he had a good chance on edge of area he's tried to pass it rather than having the confidence he just doesn't seem to have the confidence um, I know he's only scored one goal since he's coming to the club against uh, Luton but it, it worries me, and what also worries me is that I feel we've got a lack of strength in depth. Um, we seem to be weaker when we brought a subs on. And going over the course of the season, we've got a lot of Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday games where we're playing two games in the space of three or four days. And we need to have a squad that's good enough because injuries and suspensions will come into play over the course of the season. If we have a couple of big injuries, we've got to have players that are going to be ready to come in that's going to be like for like replacements or as much as near as possible in terms of quality. Because if we lose players to injury, as we did with more back end of last season, we really struggled. We just would up top last year, if you can recall. Um, so for me, in January, I would be like to see some strength in depth coming in just to bolster that bench. Um, because I feel that we were lacking options yesterday on the bench. We had Beiru short on confidence. Simoes, it's a big game for him to be coming on at the age of 18. I mean, I'd rather have seen Simoes come on rather than Wilkes, knowing the performance that Wilkes gave. I mean, he looked more knackered than Woodrow, being on for 90 minutes. Um, anyway, they, they get their second goal. I felt that it's a good ball in from the left-hand side, a great ball in, but it's a free header. He's only five foot five there, midfielder, and... Sibic and Anderson haven't done anything to impact him to at least put him off or at least make him work for it. And it's a great header. You know, give him credit for it. Um, good move from him. But the left back who's whipped it, he's had so much time to pick out his cross and then free header, in it. Um, and I'm thinking, well, they've got five, ten minutes here with injury time, they're going to nick one here. But we, we, we battled hard and um, we actually finished quite strong in the end. We did a couple of set-piece opportunities, just didn't fall for us. But if you'd asked me before the game, would I have taken a point? And I said definitely, 100%. And going to Huddersfield, local Yorkshire derby, they're in a similar position to us in the table. And go there with confidence after a great performance on Saturday. I'd have taken you, I'd have pulled you both your hands off. Um, shout out to Connor Chaplin, I thought he had an amazing game. I thought Brad Collins did a good game. His game management was good. He, he seemed to wind up the West Brom fans true and proper. And West Brom fans were having a go. But I'm telling you now, you have to do what you have to do when you're down there, when you're in a relegation dog fight. And we are at the minute, we're bottom of the table. And if we have to pick up a point away for a moment, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't like watching that. 
I want the game to be played in a proper way. But if we need to pick up a point and slow the game down by 30 seconds, then sometimes it needs to be done. And I think Collins has done really well since Radling has been out injured. For me, he's our number one now. Um, he's pulled out, he's kept us in games a lot since he's come in and he's a really good keeper for me. Really good buy. Uh, Diaby did a good game. I'm not going to have a go at him for that own goal. It could happen to anybody. I just hope it doesn't affect him long term. I thought Anderson kept coming in at a really settled game. Again, Dougal. I thought Mowat. I thought McGeehan had a decent game actually yesterday. They did a lot of, a lot of the dirty work. And I think for me more, I want to see McGeehan pushing forward now. Supporting the likes of Chaplin. He's got Mowat and Dougal in that midfield now. If we're attacking, we need more men in the box. And for me, McGeehan seems to be halfway a lot at time in no man's land between front and midfield. A commit. If you're going to go, go. If you've got Dougal and Moat with you, let them sit. Go forward. Go forward. Brown had another good game playing at left back. He's a right sided player and he played left wing back and he's normally a, a right winger. And, you know, it shows you versatility of the lad. And, you know, again, 110% work rate. Run his socks off. Cavare, one of the best performances for me this season from him and also since he's been at the club against the opposition, the level that we played against. Obviously, Corley with his two goals. I hope in January them clubs stay away because there's going to be clubs looking at him thinking, well, he's getting goals for a team that's currently bottom of the league. You know, what's he going to be doing for a team that could be, you know, mid-table, top 10? We need to be keeping his players in January and I'm looking at the likes of Mowat and Woodrow and a few others. We need to not be letting anyone go that's first team in, the, in January. That is imperative. Um, so there are a few shout outs but I think as a whole we played great now let's look at Huddersfield um, Huddersfield it's going to be a tough game um, Huddersfield's going to be a tough game I've just seen the highlights they drew 0-0 against Middlesbrough at home they've done really well since Danny Cowell has come in I mean I rate him as a manager good young British manager did a great job at Lincoln um, and hasn't worked out for Huddersfield I thought they would be up there because they've primarily kept most of the squad that came down from the Premier League. But as we know, sometimes hangovers from relegations can continue. Look at Sunderland, look at Villa. They struggled when they first came down from the Premier League. They've got a lot of players on big wages. Do they really want to fight in the Championship? Our competitivity is, our physicality is, our intense it is, week in, week out, energy-wise. And it's a different type of standard. It's a different type of football from the Premier League. Yet less time on the ball. And maybe the the Huddersfield lads have took a few a while to adjust to it, but they got rid of Seaver and was being linked with the Barnsley job, unfortunately. For me, he's a big no-no. Um, I don't want to be hiring a coach that's not done well at a fellow Yorkshire club. I know he came into a mess when Wagner left, and he really, for me, when Seaver come in, you know, the inevitable was going to happen, they were going to get relegated, and, I'm, and I've got a lot of mates who are Huddersfield fans they are quite realistic of that fact. But the way that they started the season, the football that they've played hasn't been good enough and Huddersfield are a team really with the players that they've got you know they've brought the likes of Carl and Grant in from Charlton Alex Pritchard in from Norwich they've got some good players in the side international players Congolo Netherlands international um, got some good players in the team Fraser Campbell very experienced player they should be mid-table at least and I don't think they'll be where they'll be at the end of the season I think once Cowley gets a few transfer windows underway and he gets a full season under him I don't think, obviously, top 10 or top 6 is going to be realistic now. I think for them staying up, being mid-table at the end of the season, Huddersfield will take that. Um, but it's a winnable game for me. Local Yorkshire derby. It's about who turns up on the day, who wants it more. Huddersfield have got a decent home record. I think they beat all 3-0. And obviously got a point against Middlesbrough. Um, so they've been getting clean sheets. They're more defensively solid. They obviously went to Blackburn week before and got a good 2-2 draw away at Blackburn, which is a difficult place to go to under Tony Mowbray. It's just going to be a tough game. Uh, Fraser Campbell's always a player that I like to not want us to play against. He's a very good player. Bakuna has been getting goals from him from midfield. They've got Og in the midfield and I'll work horse. Veteran does the dirty work well. And I think it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a very even game. They'd have been looking to try and get some confidence going into Saturday against Middlesbrough. We're again a similar situation to both us and Huddersfield in the table um, with the home game. And they haven't managed to do that. And that might work into our favour. We've obviously got to take the confidence and the way that we played against West Brom and think, well, we need to be playing that against a team that's around us. The results against West Brom and Swansea won't define where we are at the end of the season. We've got to be picking up points against teams that are around us. You're looking at the games against Luton and Charlton, well, where Charlton were at that time, thinking them, them, there are the teams that start the season that you pick out, thinking, right, take points off them, take points off them. And Huddersfield, where they are, we can go above them. 
on goal difference if we win on Saturday. And it's a winnable game. It's a winnable game. Um, for me, I'd not make... Maybe I'd make one change. If Halmer's fit, I'd bring him in for Sibic. Um, I just think Halmer's height from set pieces would be more of a threat than Sibic, attacking-wise. And I always say away from home, you've got to be set pieces on mark. I think on Tuesday, again, we had a few three or four corners in that game. Didn't really test their defence once from, from uh, set pieces during that game, from a corner position. And I think that is key away from home. You need to make sure that your set pieces, your free kicks and your corners, your bread and butters away from home, you're at least affecting their defence and making them work. But we're going to be doing the simple stuff well again, playing a good brand of football. The counter-attack style seems to suit as well. When we're going forward, let's commit. Not have 50-50, we're going to be going for it if we're going to go for it. Cavare, Brown, get forward, support them lads out. Chaplin again, I'm sure the lads will be buoyed by that. You know, keep your heads up. It's disappointing to lose a two-goal lead. Any player that's played football will tell you that, no matter what standard it is. But put it in perspective, West Brom might be going up this season. They're a very good side. they spent a lot of money. Their wage bill will probably be 10 times higher than ours combined, if you look at it. And Uddersfield is a winnable game. It's a winnable game. Fingers crossed we can take over a, a good crowd. We should do anyway. Uh, I'm not going to go into how much the tickets are. I don't agree with it, but more, I'm sure the Uddersfield fans that watch this video or watch our channel don't agree with £30 tickets. For me, 20 is plenty. Should be, that should be a standard basic fee across the Football League. No matter who your rivals are, should be 20 quid. Away fans always enhance the atmosphere, makes a better atmosphere. The club met more money, in my opinion, because then you get more fans in for 20 quid rather than getting half the fans in for 30 quid. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, it should, and it's not just because we're playing away from home. I say this about all teams that come to work. Well, I don't agree with it. You know, fans, it's a lot of money supporting a football club. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a sacrifice that you have to make financially. And when you're paying 30 quid, I know it's not a long way to go, so I'm not really bothered. And to be honest with you, I, I, you know, I've paid 42 quid watching us at uh, Ellen Road in that shed, so I don't really mind how much I pay. It's just I think we've got to have more standards as a football, as a football league overall, and fans and clubs need to take a, more of a stand on it towards the EFL. Um, but Woodersfield, they're going to be a tough team to play against. Like I said, I've here marked some players that I think will be a threat against us. Carl and Grant scored two against us against uh, when he was at Charlton last season in League One. We lost 2 0 that day down at the Valley whilst he was at Charlton. He went to Woodersfield in January and uh, he's a good striker. He's, he's got some goals this season. And Cowley 11 well organised. They seem to have that fight back now. Like I said, I've got a lot of friends, Uddersfield fans, and they say they seem to have that fight back. And a typical Uddersfield side, when we played Uddersfield last, I think we played them, was the year that they went up under Wagner in the playoffs. And they were well organised, well drilled. Um, Wagner, similar system to Stendhal, actually. Um, when looking back at the games, we lost, I think, 2-1 uh, in the last away game. I think they scored in the 90th minute. I think it was uh, Dean White or Og. I think Og scored his first goal in over five years. Again, it was a long time anyway. Not five, it felt like five years because I never see him score a goal, but he scored against those typical Reds. But we'll go there with plenty of confidence. Look, let's have a go. Let's have a go. I'll take a point. Uh, minimum a point because we should, you know, let's not be losing against teams that are around us. It's away from home, remember. Uddersfield have had a decent home record recently, so let's take that into account. But we'll go there, plenty of confidence. We've drew with West Brom, we've drew with Swansea. Let's now go for a game that's a lot more winnable. Let's go for it. We've, again, we might not get loads of chances being away from home. We might not be, on, we might not be. The referees, we know, are shit at this level and they always favour the home sides and that's the way that it is as far as I'm concerned. I've never heard a referee that's fair supporting Barnsley. I can't remember the last referee that was fair and equal. I'm not saying that because I'm a Barnsley fan, but even on Tuesday I thought the referee was shit and I think, again, it, they'll be shit on Saturday. I think the referees are shit altogether, so we can't rely on the referees' decisions. We've just got to get on with it, do his own thing. We've got to make sure that when we get set pieces, we've got to be clinical. We're going to make sure when we're getting to opportunities at the edge of the area, we're making simple choices. Keep it simple. We had two shots in the first half on Tuesday. We got two goals. You know, you don't have to have 50, you know, 15, 10, 15 passes to build up a goal. If you get in a good opportunity, get in a good position, have a shot. Uddersfield aren't where they are. We are to reason. Yeah, Cowell's come in and they've had a good bounce back since he's come in. Manager, new manager syndrome type thing. But it is where it is. The 22nd in the league for a reason. And look, Middlesbrough are low on form. And they didn't manage to get a goal, it were a nil-nil. So we go there with more confidence. We might be the team that's below them, but I'm telling you now, we could have more confidence than them on Saturday. And I'm quietly confident. I'm quietly confident for the first time in a while. I hope that <laughs> doesn't work against me because I can I can see it working against me. And, you know, you guys after the Willock, are you saying you're going to win? But I'm confident and I think we've got reason to be. We drew top of the league. We drew Swansea with fourth before the game last Saturday. You know, we've played teams that are in the two games against team two teams in the top six. And we've run them. 
arguably in both games. You wouldn't really, if, if you're the neutral, for both them games, you wouldn't say, well, definitely they're bottom of the league. You won't, We're not bottom of the league. We haven't been playing like we're bottom of the league. Let's go there. The lads are clearly playing for Murray, and it's good to see. Um, and well done to the lad. He's, he's, took, he's took the opportunity, and if he gets it, we've got to support him, haven't we? Do you know what I mean? Um, so, let's uh, pick the team. So team for me will be Collins in goal. Uh, your wing backs again keep the same formation will be Cavari and Brown. Uh, centre defenders I make one change. So for me it'll be Anderson, Diaby and I bring in Halmer. Midfield will be Dougal sitting in front with Mowat and McGeehan. And then you've got Chaplin and Woodrow. Um, like I said I want Mowat to be a bit, uh, McGeehan to be a bit more advanced if opportunity comes to support Chaplin. Um, and then my subs will be Walton, um, with Wilkes, Smith if he's fit, um, Odewo. Simoes, Barra. In fact, I'd like to see Callum Styles come in as well. Um, and Sibic on the bench as your centre defensive option. Scoreline, I'm going to go for 2 0 to the Reds. Fingers crossed, you know, I take a point. Look, I'm not disrespecting Huddersfield fans. I think it's a winnable game. We're confident with the way that we played these last two games. Well done to you guys for the way that you've picked up. And I don't mind Huddersfield at all. I've got a lot of time for Huddersfield, to be fair. Not really. I ain't got a thing against them whatsoever. Um, and I hope it's a good atmosphere on Saturday and um, we can get the three points. I'll be happy with a point and a good performance and going into the home game against Bristol City. But it's a winnable game. We need to be winning these games. We can't keep picking up points and, and dropping points. There's been times this season against Derby we dropped two, Swansea we dropped two. If you're looking at it the way it is, we dropped two yesterday. You're looking early in the season against Charlton, eight points there. That puts us on 17 points. Could be a totally different position. We've got to be converting these performances into results. Um, but again, 110% lads, that's all I want. Run your heart to water, blood to water, whatever the the whatever the term is. Just try your best and we'll clat, I'll clat you off all day long. You know, keep working hard. That's all we can do. Just try your best and I'm sure the, 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 the uh, people that are the Abanza fans on Saturday will applaud you for it. But um, yeah, 2-1 for me. Goal scorers be Woodrow and Chaplin. So yeah, fingers crossed guys, we can get the results on Saturday and I'll see you in Uddersfield, you Reds.